Nvidia's new RTX 3050 might be a baby in comparison to the rest of the lineup, but it's far from weak. The new $249 or 11,499 Rand card aims to become an entry point for the 30 series. It also packs all the features you can expect from the hardware. This means it comes packed with Nvidia Ampere Tech, 3rd gen Tensor Cores, 2nd gen RT Cores and 8GB of GDDR6 RAM. The model I've spent the last week with is GB RTX 3050 Gaming OC model. Like other OC models, this GPU packs slightly higher clock speeds than others while also boasting Gigabyte's fantastic cooling system. Nvidia says all RTX 3050 cards feature a base clock of 1550MHz and a boost clock to 1780MHz. However, the Gigabyte Gaming OC GPU comes out of the box with a base clock of 1822MHz already. In comparison, the card is able to output 9.11 teraflops of FP32 horsepower, which is double the power compared to say the GTX 1650. As for the memory, the RTX 3050 packs 8GB of GDDR6 memory at 14 gigabits per second across a 128-bit wide bus interface. This totals 224 gigabits of bandwidth. As for the asking price, here in SA, the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3050 Gaming OC will set you back 11,499 Rand. Elsewhere, it starts at $249. There's nothing much going on here when it comes to the overall design of the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3050 Gaming OC. The card packs a similar design to most other gaming OC GPUs with a silver and black shell. This 3050 uses only one single 8-pin connector and you can see by the card that the business is kept all to one section of the hardware. The rest is mostly just for cooling. Keep in mind that my older card, the GTX 1080 Ti, was a giant piece of hardware, so having this 3050 in my case took some getting used to. Even when I first plugged it in, I was looking for the other connector ports and remembered the 3050 doesn't need it. Speaking of installation, it is simple and follows the same install process as most GPUs. Thanks to its smaller size, this GPU doesn't need a bracket or anything fancy. I simply took out my older card, put this one in and screwed in the screws. As for the internals, I'm not going to tear apart this card because I need to use it, but I'm sure you'll be able to look for teardowns on other YouTube channels and on the internet. The only lighting you'll find on this Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3050 Gaming OC is on the logo. This lighting can also be synced up using the RGB Fusion 2.0 software, this means it looks awesome alongside your other Gigabyte hardware. My PC now is officially a fully kitted out Gigabyte PC build, so thanks to the brand for being so supportive and letting me play with everything. When it comes to the cooling, the card features Gigabyte's popular and effective wind force cooling system. It packs three 80mm blade fans, but the difference with this system is the middle fan spins in the opposite direction. This helps push the heat to the back of the card, which then improves the airflow and pressure. Fans are also active, meaning they don't turn unless they need to. It all sounds very cool, but this tech isn't very much different from other Gigabyte cards on the market. Still, it is nice to have. The tech in the RTX 3050 is quite small in comparison to other cards, which means there's much more space for a heatsink. The GPU features a screen cooling section that pushes all the air to the far end of the heatsink and out of the card. You can see this by the smaller rectangle section. While this all sounds great, we need to put it to the test to see if it actually makes a difference. Nvidia's big selling point for the RTX 3050 is 60 FPS gaming at 1080p on maxed out settings. So I really wanted to test this out. I also wanted to test out the typical benchmarks like Fire Strike, Time Spy, and more. My current PC includes the following hardware. I then ran a handful of gaming benchmarks across a variety of games. This includes ones that I usually test out and some new games like God of War on PC. God of War on PC is specifically nice to test out because just leaving the game on the title screen maxes out the GPU. You can see from the test results that the RTX 3050 is clearly aiming to be a 1080p card if you want to max out your games and even enable ray tracing. With DLSS enabled, the card gets a boost across games by a few frames, but it's all dependent on your setup and what game you're playing. When testing out 4K games, as long as RTX was disabled or at times on medium or low, these titles performed quite well. 
Watch Dogs Legion for example pumped out about 50 to 60 frames per second with DLSS on ultra performance and ray tracing on low. The RTX 3050 doesn't want to be a 4K ray tracing card. Instead, the tests show a different story. They show a GPU that performs well at 1080p and 1440p, with a few tweaks here and there to your ray tracing setup. If you don't mind 30fps gaming, which I know many people do, then you're best off leaving settings on 1080p for most current releases. But there's a nice sweet spot on this GPU for even 1440p games. This means your HD monitors as well as your QHD monitors will benefit the most from the RTX 3050. However, if you want to get into 4K gaming, just expect to sit around the 30 FPS mark. When it comes to cooling, the RTX 3050 handled itself well. I actually struggled to heat the card up, the card maxed out at 2155 MHz on the GPU clock while playing God of War and stayed at around 70 degrees Celsius. At the max performance, the card was pulling 130 watts of power. This fluctuated between 128 watts and 130. Similar to the RTX 3060 Ti and 3070, the RTX 3050 features 8GB of GDDR6 memory. This is an ample amount to play the latest titles at 1080p and 1440p. You can get away with 4K, but some sacrifices in ray tracing and game settings need to be made to achieve this. In the end, the RTX 3050 is a decent entry point for gamers looking at In the end, the RTX 3050 is a decent entry point for gamers looking at a 1080p card that is versatile enough to even get QHD gaming in. It doesn't break the bank that badly in comparison to other models on the market and the power requirements might fit into your dream PC build too. I'm also sure it's going to beat the AMD 6500 XT which is meant to be this card's direct competitor. I know it is still expensive, especially here in SA, but at least it adds a new tier of options to look at when upgrading from the 20 series or even looking at a whole new build. A huge thanks to Gigabyte for sending this RTX 3050 card my way to test out before it releases. Is this a model card that you're looking at? Let us know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. And for all gaming PC tech news, visit glitch.online daily. Until next time, farewell.